Hey everyone. Have you ever heard the term de-authentication? I hope many of you are familiar with the term. But the question is, is it really impossible to prevent de-authentication? And the answer is, no. Prevention is available. For better understanding we need to know how de-authentication works in 802.11 standard. There are three different types of frames in this standard. Control frame. Data frame. And management frame. Here, we only need to focus on management frames. Management frames such as beacon frames, probe request frames, probe response frames, authentication frames, de-authentication frames and many more are used by wireless devices to initiate and tear down sessions for network services. Let's just talk about de-authentication frame, de-authentication is the frame terminating the authentication of a station. In a wireless network, when an ATCHES point want to terminate a session to a specific client or station, then it sends a de-authentication frame to the connected client. An AP can send de-authentication frame to all of its connected stations for terminating session by broadcasting. Station or AP can send a de-authentication frame when all communications are terminated. Sending the frame from the access point to a station is called a sanction technique to inform a rogue station that they have been disconnected from the network. An attacker can send a wireless access point a de-authentication frame at any time, with a spoofed address for the victim. The attacker only needs to know the victim's MAC address, which is available in the clear through wireless network sniffing. So why an attacker would do this? How duplication can be used for evil? For capturing four-way handshake, which has the key for authentication. After capturing the handshake the attacker can obtain the key by various brute forcing methods. If you don't know how to capture the handshake, please click on the card shown upper right side of the video. This is a type of denial of service attack, so it can be used for jamming the network. The Federal Communications Commission has fined hotels and other companies for launching de-authentication attacks on their own guests, the purpose being to drive them off their own personal hotspots and force them to pay for on-site Wi-Fi services. Tools like Aircrack and MDK3 can be used for performing this type of attack. So now what to do? Unlike data traffic, which can be encrypted to provide a level of confidentiality, management frames must be heard and understood by all clients and therefore must be transmitted as open or unencrypted. But the IEEE 802.11 W amendment added management frame protection functionality to the 802.11 standard. When 802.11 W standard is implemented in the wireless medium, Client protection is added by the AP adding cryptographic protection to de-authentication and disassociation frames preventing them from being spoofed in a DOS attack. Suppose an attacker is sending de-authentication frames to AP or station which are unencrypted, so the AP and stations would not accept the de-authentication frame. AS the IEEE 802.11 W is the protected management frame standard for the IEEE 802.11 family of standards so it is not responsible for preventing the wireless medium from data frame and control frame attacks. It only protects against some special management frames like de-authentication, disassociation frames. At present, only few devices support this standard. Cisco has been supporting protected management frames since version 7.3 code release. All you need to do on the wireless controller is configure the WLAN to use PMF. The bigger issue is, does your wireless client support 802.11 W? If you have an 802.11 AC wireless card in your mobile device there is a good chance that it does support 802.11 W because the chipset has been updated. If you have an older 802.11N wireless card the odds are you are not 802.11W compliant. I hope you enjoyed. So what about giving a thumbs up?